There's a piece in The Independent today, Run For Your Wife, Is This The Worst British Film Ever Made? And then a list of some of the reviews which have described it variously as, you know, uh, about as much fun as contagious illness. Um, so here's the deal. Is it's, it Sex Lives of the Potato Men all over again? You're in the same ballpark, basically. So the story is, it's a, you know, it's a screen adaptation of the uh, trouser-dropping uh, stage farce about a genial cockney bigamist who, having been knocked on the head by a tin of dog food, needs to keep his wives from finding out about each other. Starring Is a clip. Just calm down! I'm gonna kill the pair of you! It's just a bit of a misunderstanding! Let's have it! Let's bloody have it! How long has it been going on? Nothing's going on! It's just a bit of a misunderstanding! You shut up! Of course! Excuse me? Uh, it's all right. Go back downstairs. We're dealing with this. Who the bloody hell are you anyway? We're on the flat downstairs. And what the bloody hell does she mean by we? I'm going to call the police. No! Oh! There's a lot of cussing in there. No, I know. I, it, was, it was editorial. Apparently, it doesn't count. Um, what doesn't count? What if it doesn't <laughs> It's It's genial British cockney. <laughs> The trailer for the film, which you may have seen, hilarious. I know, yeah. It did make me want to drop my trousers. Yeah, it did. And uh, and the bit when Lionel Blair and Christopher Biggins fall through the ceiling. Uh, anyway, anyway um, cameos a go-go. I mean, you know, just a you know, stupid amount of every theatrical lovey possible, you know, turns up just long enough to humiliate themselves. And um, the, the trailer has got standing on a rake and Neil Morrissey sitting on a cake, which basically tells you where we are. Um, the thing is this, it, I've always found it really easy to laugh at Danny Dyer. Laughing with Danny Dyer is a completely different matter. And for the first time in a film, I didn't find Danny Dyer in the slightest bit funny. Uh, the thing about him is, is he has no sense of humour at all. If you want proof that Danny Dyer has no sense of humour, laugh at him and see how he reacts. I mean, I've, you know, laughed at him often and his reaction is to go, I'm going to hit you, you're laughing at me, I'm not taking me seriously, I am going to smash your nose in with my head, it is so unfair, how dare you not, I'm a friend of Errol Pinn, oh! You do that to Danny Dyer and, he, and you know, I didn't understand much No, about. exactly. But the point is, he has no sense of humour, as he's demonstrated, but if you laugh at somebody and they threaten violence against you, they don't have a sense of humour. The, the thing with it, with him is he also, you know, he torched his own career a while ago by, you know, this piece in Zoo magazine in which uh, the column that he wrote advised the reader of Zoo magazine to cut their girlfriend's faces. This was a, the idea, his idea of a joke. He was then outraged that this sudden hair rebounded on him. And he's never quite recovered from that. So what he's decided to do is kind of reinvent himself as not a hard man, but a comedy star. Now, this is kind of typical of that sort of pompous belief that actually you can downshift into comedy. Being playing a hard man on screen is is really easy. Anyone can do it. It's just, you know it's really easy. Comedy is really really difficult. And what Dyer demonstrates is this utter kind of contemptible belief that somehow you relax into comedy. No, you don't. What he's demonstrated. I mean, we talk time and time again about comedy films not being funny enough because it's really really hard. And I have nothing but respect for comedians, particularly comedians who actually make me laugh. The idea that somehow you can slump down into comedy. Is a is complete misnomer. Now the other thing is an awful lot of people who the, the reviews. I mean the reviews of this film are f unbelievably bad, and that's fine because nobody laughed in a, in the screening. You know, people aren't laughing. People aren't finding it funny. However, it's not enough to simply say, well, it's hideously outdated and it's an old, you know, whoops, vicar wears me trousers that used to be funny isn't anymore. The fact of the matter is. Loads of people saw Run For Your Wife on stage and did laugh. The problem is with the film itself, and the film is unbelievably dated and outmoded and all the rest of it, but its central problem is that it wants to be a, you know, a comedy about a genial bigamist. And at the centre of it, Tanny Tyre in an interview said, well, I generally play the lovable, the lovable rogue. And you go, well, the word in there is lovable. And the problem is if you don't find the central character in any way lovable or funny, then you're not going to in any way engage with the drama. So. The idea that somehow the problem is the stage play, I mean, as I said, people saw the stage play and laughed, people see the film not laughing. Also, 
the idea that you can say the fact that he has the most retrograde attitude towards you know women and uh, and, and gays and you know, just these unbelievably sort of outmoded are we still allowed to do that gags people say oh well that's because it's you know in the tradition of great british sex comedies well in fact if you know anything about the tradition of great british sex comedies this isn't up there with them I and people say oh it's like carry on it's not carry on this is no carry on this is no carry on cabbie in fact you know go and read go and read david mcgillivray's doing rude things if you actually want to know what british sex comedy used to look like go and watch cool it carol that's not a movie that d feels the necessity to denigrate absolutely everybody to the lowest kind of gross stereotype so those those excuses don't work it's not that it's terrible because the source material isn't funny because at one point people were laughing at the source material on stage it's not that it's terrible because all old british sex farces have nothing funny about them because there are there is a great range of them and they are not represented they are not represented by run for your wife it's not simply enough to say well obviously all these characters are so disgracefully stereotyped it's okay because it's a generic trope because if you look back at the history of that stuff it's not a generic it's not it's not that simple what you're left with is this really really bizarre situation in which you're watching this graveyard of comedy in which you could you know no nothing funny happening at all and i actually felt relieved when christopher biggins came on because i thought finally <laughs> Finally, somebody who's going to get the measure of it. And you know the most astonishing thing? In the company of Danny Dyer, Christopher Biggins actually lowers his game. I mean, you wouldn't have thought it was possible, but Christopher Biggins actually plays down. And you, you're going, I, this, is, this, is, this is beyond unreal. And literally, you know, silence, this kind of great big, you know, vacuum of, you think somebody out there must be giggling, somebody out there must be finding it funny, and they don't. And the reason they don't is because on... Ask me, what's the secret of comedy? What's the timing? And that's in in a nutshell it. Dyer bah! has one range. His one range is I am a really hard cockety geezer who plays a lovable rogue. And if you laugh at me, I will break your nose. If you laugh with me, then you are on my side. But if you laugh at me, oh, go, I'm sorry. It is in suffering, even by Danny Dyer's unbelievably dismal standards, it is unwatchable. It is astonishing, but for the first time, I never found Danny Dyer funny in the slightest.